Aloha and uh, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii on July the 15th, uh, 2021. This show is America Finding Its Way. And today I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Our topic is, as the title uh, says, vote, are voting rights about to fade away before the COVID virus leaves us? Uh, we know that alarming reports show the surge in Delta variant infections is large and unforgiving for all the unvaccinated. According to national medical data reports, 99% of recent hospitalizations and deaths are Delta infections in patients who are unvaccinated. So while state legislatures uh, with increasing hospitalizations and death numbers do nothing, allowing citizens to infect others by not imposing masking and vaccination laws or requirements, they are also at the same time mega legislating to, conter to curtail citizens' right to vote. This leaves many states' democratic legislators powerless to ensure citizens are safe with viable public health policy and the breakdown in support for voting rights eliminates citizens' real engagement in self-government. So today, I um, want to ask you all, what, it, what, is, what are your comments on this and, and how are we um, uh, thinking about these issues, which are dire? So uh, with these reports about the Republican le legislative aims to cur curtail all citizens' full voting rights is unaligned, actually, with even Republican voters' wishes, because 58% say that they're in favor of extending um, early voting and some other uh, of the issues. But it appears that the changes Republicans seek in the laws are, are going to hurt all and even those that they want most to be voting. So are they cutting off their noses despite their faces? So Jay, what are they doing? Well, you know, I can't hardly, you know, argue with success. They're successfully, you know, adopting these bills. The Republican governors are signing these bills. And at the same moment in time, they're successfully opposing the vaccines um, and, and taking dramatic action against anyone who encourages the vaccines. My favorite, favorite story, Stephanie, my favorite one, this may be my favorite in, in some time, is uh, in the state of Missouri, if, uh, if, if you want to get a vaccine, you'll be criticized. Your friends and neighbors and anyone who finds out you got the vaccine will criticize you. So now the health authorities are offering secret appointments where you can come down and no one will know that you slipped in the back door and got a vaccine. That's where we have gone. And, and although, you know, um, it's hard to make a connection rationally between the political forces that call for voter suppression and the political forces uh, that you know, that would oppose vaccines, uh, even when it's like suicide, not to have a vaccine in a, in a state which is rampant with the uh, coronavirus, including Delta and wait, there'll be Lambda. Lambda's coming up from South America, wait. Um, it's, it's, it's the strangest thing, but they're, they're connected somehow. And I think that, I think part of that has to be that it will make Herr Trump happy. It will, it will somehow satisfy a need to please him. Um, and, and that's what we have. I think going forward, um, I think, as I said yesterday, I think Joe Manchin is a fake. Um, he is really not going to do it. I, we can talk about what he had for breakfast and lunch and, and what, 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 what he said today or didn't say today. And we can spot him out moment for moment, but he's not going to do it. No change in the filibuster, no Voting Rights Act. You can disagree, but I think that's where we're going. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, if you oppose vaccines, the country will be rampant with coronavirus. Not only the people who have not been vaccinated, but some who have. And when the new variants uh, you know, take greater hold, other people who have been vaccinated. So mm, we're, in we're in terrible shape because at the end of the day, it sounds like A, it will be sick and, and, and our economy will suffer. 
And also at the same time, we'll have inflation, which appears to be rearing its ugly head right now. And B, um, the Republicans will have both houses. We borrow. Uh, Jillian, yes. Well, I think that um, we're we have the Democratic legislatures who have sought to act, and in in their actions, they they took flight to the U.S. Congress. So, Cynthia, what do you think? What do you think that's going to do for them? Will the Congress do anything? Well, I'll tell you, I. I'm trying to hold on to hope. I'm trying to be optimistic like Winston <laughs> always is for us. Um, I heard um, on uh, 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 Stephen Colbert last night, or I guess night before last, when Eleanor Holmes Norton, the re representative from DC was on talking about Making DC, a, um, you know, its its own state, so it can have two senators, and how she doesn't even get to vote. She gets to do all the work, but doesn't even get to be part of the final vote. But this was something that she said that really stuck with me. That I thought was really cool. Um, she says, "You saw what happened in 2020. Record numbers voted. Tell us we can't vote. Uh, well, now you are really going to piss us off." And I thought, okay, let's get some people pissed off and get them out there to the polls, regardless of the suppression techniques that are happening. And in that case, it is our only hope. Um, we used to talk about last, you know, the, the 2020 election and how it was the most important of our lives and all this other stuff. But what good did it do us if it doesn't get us over the edge? And so really this one coming up, in 2022, that's the one that's really going to be able to make a difference. And if we can get the same kind of turnout in 22 that we got in 20, regardless of whether or not we can't get to the polls at the right times or whatever we need to do to get there, right? But then we got to talk about the fact that there's these other things that are involved in all these bills, and it's making it easier for them to change the electors, make them pick their own. They can change whatever the results are. And there's like no backlash for that. There's no accountability. There's no anything to the voters. It's like they get to, if the Republicans are in charge of that state, they get to pick whatever outcome they want, which to me is what's terrifying. And, and that, I believe the voters will be like Representative Norton said, they'll be more mad. They'll be even more engaged. They're gonna to wanna to come out even more so. But what good does it do us if those other things are in place that make it so they can recount our votes whatever way they want? So what are uh, the plans? Because if, um, if we can't vote, if not everybody can vote for Eleanor in the district, um, mm -hmm not even vote for her, what, what are we going to do to, to intervene? What is the intervention? What do you think? Um, oh, excuse me, you want to? I think the intervention needs to be people. I need people need to come up in droves. Like when Black Lives Matter after George Floyd, we flooded the streets. Well, I think voting rights needs to be that important also. And we need to flood the streets. We need to be bold like the people in Texas that just left so they can't have a quorum. So they can't vote right now on that that initiative going forward, right? They can't vote on that legislation because there's no quorum, but what? So they can't stay out of Texas forever. That doesn't work. And I think they were very smart and I applaud what they did going to, to DC to try to really um, take a spotlight for all of America to really look at what's happening here. We were all so overload mode after the 2020 election that nobody wanted to pay attention to anything. And right. I really think that so, the Republicans so, took advantage of that. Winston, do you think that um, what, what Cynthia is saying about taking action, regardless of it, any outcome promised or expected, 
or likely is that is that what we do what what are the interventions how do we hold this hold the line well i uh i share in uh cynthia's everything that she said but i'm probably veering more towards what jay has been pounding all along which is that uh, it's it's looking more grim as we go by. I mean, when you have these, all the Democrats leaving Texas to prevent voting, essentially a takeover of the voting system in our in that state, this is insane. This is America in 2021, and we're 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 having at least 17 states in, introducing laws to restrict voters' rights in so, in some ways. I mean, it's and and we know what it's what it's all about. This is not so that we're enfranchising more people to vote or making it easier or safer or, or anything about that. Um, you know, I was looking at the, uh, our Canadian friends um, in, in the, the Lawrence Martin wrote in the Globe and Mail, and he says the cornerstone of U.S. democracy is crumbling. And uh, he says that, that uh, Joe Biden was not her uh, hyperbol hyperbolizing that's not the right pronunciation. Uh, th this week, when he claimed that American democracy, given the raw and sustained election subversion by Republicans, was under its greatest threat since the Civil War. I think they're right in this. And he says, that basically, that all hell, uh, all will come to a, a head in the midstream elections in the fall of 2022, when all hell could break loose over voter eligibility, voter count confrontations, overturn verdicts, or all three. To win, Republicans are convinced they have to disenfranchise minorities. Their very purpose is to see the current voting system undermined. Unless Mr. Biden overcomes prohibitive odds to pass legislation, you might say, stop the steal. It will very likely happen. And he has renamed uh, the Republicans uh, the grand old disgrace of a party. And I think there's a, a lot to that. Um, you know, you have other ones where the Washington Post had an, an, uh, a story yesterday. It says under Trump, Republicans touted the coronavirus vaccines. Now under Biden, they're questioning them. This is just craven political crap. It's Rand Paul. Uh, I mean, everything that comes out of his mouth is suspect, honestly. But uh, you have... Uh, Ronnie Jackson um, saying uh, this, Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, intellectual head of the Republican Party, um, giving her two cents. Why was it good under Trump and now it's not under, under Biden? This is really confusing people. But on the other side, you have some other things, which is, I don't know if you saw on the Hill that the Alabama military base ordering troops to get vaccinated because they're at 33%. Exactly, the ambivalence that you're pointing out, the ambivalence. So I want to move over to, to ask about a prediction that relates to that and is another variable in the mess that you're describing, which is we are going to go even more bipolar because we're going to have two groups in the country, which I think you're leading to and in in, um, insinuating. We're going to have the vaccinated and the infected, and these are going to be two polarized groups. So... Tim, how do you think that's going to fit into the picture as we go forward to the election and to dealing with this and trying to intervene? Well, I hate to say it this way, and it's going to sound awful, but um, those who are not vaccinated and related to voting is they're not going to be around to vote. <laughs> the Delta variant is going to kill them. And, uh, you know, this is a, a more variant and in, in, in much it's, it's, it's COVID on steroids. And I know of a personal situation where, again, uh, this individual poo-pooed uh, COVID and the family poo-pooed it. And of course he got COVID and now he's dead. He was on a vendor for some time and his wife decided that maybe it was time to get the kids vaccinated and maybe it was time for her to get a vaccination. But it took the death of her husband to realize that. And they sacrificed their family member because they listened to a false narrative, which started with Trump and then was amplified by Fox and all all the uh, enablers on Fox and, and in Congress. And so to answer your question, um, with more time that the Delta variant will have its time to work into those red states that they deny the validity of the vaccination, they're gonna get sick and not, maybe all of them won't die, but a number of them will die. And that's, it's unnecessary and it's uncalled for. And I don't wanna see any of my fellow Americans to perish under something that they don't have to perish under. And it's, it, it, it makes us look really, as a nation, it just makes us look like we're back in the Middle Ages. 
And so I wish it would stop, but it's not. Yeah. And I, I, you know, as far as the voting rights, I, I think we're on, it's a concentrated effort to do what's happening. I look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma in the 2020 election, presidential election, uh, Donald Trump won that state by almost 66%, Joe Biden 30.3%. What is Oklahoma doing? They're demanding uh, an audit. Now of 77 counties, all counties voted for Trump and yet they want an audit because they think something suspect. And, and the bottom line is, the bottom line is um, it's not but they want to cast doubt. Every state now wants to cast doubt on the validity of our presidential election. That's not by accident. This is a concentrated effort. And um, I'm not saying as a conspiracy that every state is doing it, but you take Oklahoma as an example and, and you go, what's behind that? Other than what the obvious is to discount the validity, the credibility of our national elections. And it's gotta be stopped. And I think Joe Manchin, uh, contrary to what Jay, Jay thinks, I think Joe Manchin is going to support the John R. Lewis um, Advancement Voting Act. And I think he'll do it carefully and he'll draw it out, maybe for more drama, he'll draw it out. But um, the bottom line is I think it's gonna pass and it will take uh, Vice President Harris to break the tie. Well, I, as, as, as we face this and as the Delta and then as Joseph, uh, Jay says the next one is coming, the Lambda. And the children and the young are infected, which is clearly what is occurring now. So there's data to tell us that the 20s and the 30s are getting it as much as anybody else. So they're in the, they're, they're in the pot with the boiling water. So do you think, Jay, that bringing, uh, broadening the infection to, in, into the entire population, now not just getting rid of the oldsters who should be gone anyway and let the other people take their place, but now that we're, we're getting our youngsters threatened, do you think that might make a difference? No. no, I think I think the country is broken. You know, I, I can see uh, Vladimir Putin dancing the Kazatska every day. Um, because, you know, his uh, secret police um, and his internet research agency, which we saw, you know, surface uh, a few years ago in, in connection with um, the first Trump election. Um, what, what, what are the basic rules Okay, is divide, divide and conquer, divide in as many ways as you can, uh, create division among the population, con confusion among the population. So that's what we have. We have confusion about COVID. We have confusion about voting rights. And in the process, we have a complete um, deterioration of confidence, confidence in the government, in the system, and in the country. I think we're really right now unable to take action on any of these things as, as hard as, as uh, Joe Biden tries. And he's trying very hard and he's achieving some things. But the bottom line is the, the principal points here of voting rights and, you know, uh, him, maybe one bill gets through, but the John Lewis bill is not enough uh, to counteract all these states that are pulling the rug out from uh, voting rights going to make everybody confused. And by the time you get to November, Election Day 2022, gee whiz, there's going to be such confusion over what applies, what doesn't apply, what's in the courts, what the courts have done, what the Supreme Court will do. You can bet they're going to do something stupid. Um, and so, you know, what we have is a, is a, is a lack of confidence in the system. And uh, like the, um, the, what is it, the representative from Washington, D.C. says, and a footnote to that, by the way, is that that is a bill that is never going to get through. So I wouldn't spend any time at all on it. Never happened. It's at the, at the very end of the list of priorities. Not going not gonna to happen. But, uh, you know, what she says about people getting angry, you bet they'll be angry. And uh, Vladimir will be doing another Kazatska when he sees all the people in the street fighting with each other and the government coming in and fighting with. Him. And then, you know, all of this, remember that Trump is the underlying force of so much of this. And, and that despite all these books that are coming out revealing his craziness and calling him unhinged and deranged and what have you, really good books about people who know, is he's still got a certain amount of popularity. 
and we stand to risk in 2022 of letting, if, if they take, GOP takes both houses of Congress, who do you think the real winner is? It's Trump. And, and he'll try to run then for 2024, and he'll stand a good chance. If the Republicans take Congress, they're going to do all kinds of dastardly things. If he becomes president, it's time to file your immigration papers with Canada. Well, I didn't think that uh, we'd get to this quite so fast, but uh, my question, next question is for everybody to comment on, do you think the U.S. democracy is going to be the same or different in the next uh, couple, of, next decades? What do you really think now? Well, I think it's deteriorating. <clears throat> I think, I think it's, it's actually coming apart while we watch. We can't agree on basic facts. We can't remember the, you know, the, the founders' principles. Uh, we can't even agree on voting rights. And we are um, bringing back um, you know, the post-Reconstruction era of racism in the country. Uh, you know, that's, that's the highest priority for a number of those states and for everybody in those states. Uh, we are completely dissembled. Uh, how do you bring that back? Maybe Winston has a positive idea. Well, we'll try it. I thought that, the po that a positive, with, that we would be assured of a human response in the direction of, of every, the best, uh, make it the best for everyone if the children are involved. You know, nobody refused the polio shot. There wasn't any problem at all with the polio vaccine, okay? Nor with the sugar cube it was delivered. No, but remember, only a couple of years ago, there was a big controversy about measles, which is also ridiculous and irrational. And there were in, uh, hundreds of thousands of people in this country who were opposing measles shots, which have been established as safe. Um, and now, you know, I don't know how many tens of millions of people uh, have, have taken the, um, the vaccine against uh, COVID. Uh, they're still not, it's not settled. Now, one of the problems is for some reason that escapes me, maybe somebody here knows better. Uh, the CDC has not, finalized its approval of the COVID vaccines, any of them. And this leaves a big a channel wide open to people to say, well, I'm hesitant. They haven't finally approved it. I'm hesitant because it can have side effects. And therefore, you know, you have this fragmentation on that too. Um, bottom line is that nobody seems to agree on anything. It's, it's, it's getting worse. And Biden is trying hard. You have to give them good marks for that. But it's getting worse. When I, when I, you know, there was a thing in, there is a thing in Europe, uh, in France. I mentioned yesterday that uh, Macron is 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 putting legislation through or some kind of executive order requiring vaccines for everybody. Um, that's what we need to do. We can't tiptoe around this. And on voting rights, I, I mean, somebody ought to really come down on Mansion. He's been holding it up for months. And I don't believe a sincerity. Quite a bit of agreement, consensus on that. Well, Cynthia, why do you think uh, that we are losing our strength and something as august as the CDC is uh, weak, is acting weak, if, as Jay says? I think the CDC got gutted during Trump's presidency. So I think that might be part of it. We, I don't really trust any of that anymore so much because of the difference in the way he could manipulate some of the people that work there to do things that were totally against what's real and just do what he wanted them to say or do. And that just undermines my confidence in the CDC. Um, as far as that goes, I agree with Jay. Um, there's this weird anti-vaxxer movement that started back about for kids with, they said that it would cause autism. And so they, they blamed the rise in autism on vaccines. And a, even though they debunked it and it said, you know, this, this post or this, you know, this thing that was put out there is wrong. It's not true, but people still believe it. So how do you reach through that kind of psychosis? I don't really understand it. 
Um, okay, and then give us a little help here, uh, since you've been lauded as the positive one, uh, even during this conversation. So what, what are your remedies or what do you think is going to happen? Are we going to strength, get strength again or are we con continuing to weaken? Which, which, and what will keep us from sliding into more weakness? Can I well, say first before Winston finish starts? Sure. Yeah. I think it's all about 22. It's all about 2022. If we can hold the houses, maybe even gain some people, we'll be fine. If we don't, we're toast. Sorry. Okay. So that gonna, that's going to be positive, Winston. That's going to wait you, Winston, to see the remedy? I, I, I'm not feeling, uh, well, let's just say, <laughs> We're gonna. We. I want to be cheery. So, okay. Educate yourselves, viewers of the show. I love the review and slate of Michael Wolf's uh, landslide. It's like he says, "I love reading this because it's just such horrible smut, and yet it's true." And so it's just like, but but he says it's something delicious about being validated by just reading about the slime we just have all experienced. But next week, let's look very much towards I Alone Can Fix It by Pulitzer Prize winners uh, Philip Rucker and Carol uh, Leoning, uh, Leonig, uh, and then also, uh, they, they and they wrote a very stable genius uh, coming out and, uh, as well. So, you know, I, I believe that they are the same ones that wrote it. In any, in any event, we have information coming out. Order copies for your friends, or at least the Cliff Notes version. Send them out. Uh, remind them that we have all been deeply traumatized, that our nation, our institutions, our workplaces, our families have been deeply traumatized by this. And I, I was just talking with a neighbor and she said, my, my um, niece and nephew voted for Donald Trump. I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't even talk to them anymore. And I thought, good gravy. I, this, is what, this is what's happened in our nation is that we can't even talk to our friends, families, neighbors, relatives anymore because we're so... Uh, weirded out by people that are living in an alternate universe. And so we have to go back and educate ourselves. We have to realize what's happened, deconstruct it. Joe Biden, um, keep on. Uh, that When the military is there, uh, the scary thing was I was also reading Washington Post about General Miley uh, warning of the Reichstag moment. And he said that he called uh, McMaster and said, what the F am I dealing with? Um, and he said he was feared in American equivalent of brown shirts in the streets. Um, it, this is very uh, scary stuff. So he's, it says it, so if someone wanted to seize control, they'd need to gain sway over the FBI, CIA, and Defense Department, where Trump had in, installed staunch allies. So I think that he said everything's going to be okay. We're going to have a peaceful transfer of, of power. We're going to land this plane safely. This is America. It's strong. The institutions are bending, but it won't break. Last thing I want to say is COVID, a year ago, COVID didn't exist in our minds, really. I mean, it started to super grasp us in about March, right? Here's this, we talk about Lambda. In Peru, it's 90% of the cases. They have half a, a percent of their entire population died. 30% of their people are in poverty now. And it, in neighboring Chile, it's 31% of the cases. Winston, that's... Uh, this, Really frightening. Now we're going to have to in the in the in time for time's sake. We have to move over here to Tim. Well, I would just say COVID is uh, it's <laughs> you know the C variant, the D variant, the X variant. It's coming. We're going to get so many things coming out. We we don't even know what's going on. What's that mean to us for a recovery, Tim? Are, are, is, is there a recovery or do we stay in the muck? My first answer. I I try to get at this. I I think. Sometimes Americans learn the hard way, and that's, and in this case, I think more deaths are going to occur until they finally get it. They'll finally realize that our belief in Donald Trump and and you know the, the whole hoax of the, the the virus wasn't a hoax; it was real, and it took a lot more deaths. We already have six hundred thousand Americans dead. Is it going to take more? I'm sad to say it's going to take more, and until they get off, you know the um, the Kool Aid the Jim Jones Kool-Aid, if you will, um, more are going to die. And, and our democracy will, f if they believe this big lie, they are certainly still believe in the big lie of the election fraud. And this, it was stolen from Donald Trump. So we're dealing with multiple conspiracies that as a nation we have to contend with. And the two big ones is the, the denial of, 
of the vaccination and the denial of the election loss. And uh, until we get those two wrapped around our heads and, and truth enters into the picture, um, you can expect more mayhem for our democracy and, and how we do business as a nation. Well, we're not doing the business we need to do. And now it's our aloha time here on the show. So we're going to have to wrap it up. So um, I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton hosting uh, for the America show program, Finding Its Way. So see you next week, same time and day. Mahalo, everybody. And thank you. <laughs>